This week on Wardens, it's hard field training, giving officers the skills they need when things go bad. We want to get to that gut level of, is our training really effective? Then we hike into the high country to investigate a bear attack with several unanswered questions. What if they're cubs from this year? It's also the waterfowl opener, and with a combination of shotguns, dogs, and water, wardens are on high alert. That all happens right now. A call has come in from a fisherman who has reported a shooting involving a grizzly bear in the high country. Wardens Joe Cambic and Terry Althaus are assigned to investigate. Today, they hope to find answers to exactly what happened in this bear encounter. They were under the impression that uh, you could go quite a ways with a pickup uh, up behind the gate. There. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just go, we'll drive our trucks past that lock gate just a little ways, just to, so they're on site. I know we can get the four-wheeler up there a ways. It gets pretty rocky, but I think we can do it. Okay. It'll be boulder climbing. Everything going that way is the game range, and I think this is going back into forest, according to the map. Most of the time, the lower lake's easy to get to. It's the upper one, it's a little bit more difficult. There's supposed to be a trail somewhere, but I can never find it. And so it's difficult to bushwhack through there, but through boulders and deadfall and timber and nastiness in there. Bear attacks in the wilderness are probably the most feared encounters for the public. David Galkey is a veterinarian in Anaconda, Montana, and has years of experience fishing the mountain lakes. He has encountered bears in the past, but not a brown bear like this. But I've never had one where he's seen me from 200 yards away and then chased me down. And I heard a woof, the bear had come up behind me. It's like, oh shoot, this is a bear. So I just froze and it's like, this is gonna hurt. Nothing happened, so I stood up and turned around. 10 yards behind me was this brown bear looking straight at me, eyeball to eyeball, shoulder to shoulder, not looking to go left or right, he was looking straight at me. I'm thinking, oh no, this isn't good. This case has more than a few questions. Was it actually a grizzly bear? Are there any bear cubs to consider? And will the shooting scene match the incident report that was filed? This is kind of the unknown. We don't know if it's a grizzly or a black bear. We don't know if there's cubs or any other bears up there. What if they're cubs from this year? The question could be different than the three year length cubs. Um, we just gotta go take a look. We know that there's a dead bear of some kind. We know that it was shot by a fisherman. We don't know whether, we gotta investigate to make sure it was a legitimate shoot that he was actually protecting himself. And uh, that's what we gotta do. 200 miles to the northwest just outside Kalispell, Montana, Region 1 wardens will be conducting annual firearm certification training. Amongst those who wear a badge for a living, game wardens are unique individuals. They must be able to do a variety of tasks well in a short order. Wardens are protectors of public safety, wildlife, and nature. They also need to be able to turn on a dime and become a stealthy backcountry Sherlock Holmes, if you will. A great deal of this is learned from intensive training exercises. I'm gonna be out with Montana Plate FWP 652. How you guys doing? Oh, go, go, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop it! Hands in the air, hands in the air, turn around! Those track, those guys are your friends. They got gotta be tough. Those guys are 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 tough. Those guys
check, check, cuff, cuff. Try to train throughout the year uh, for various different things. Uh, we've got some requirements that we got to maintain for you know, some basic certifications or policies. We want to get to that gut level of, is our training really effective? Good. And I didn't shoot because you gave me loud verbal commands immediately. Now, I didn't respond to them initially, but experts will tell you that to be good at this work, wardens must be able to see the big picture fast and establish exactly what's going down and quickly make the right choices. Those choices must result in safety and mission success. Captain Lee Anderson leads this operation. He's been with the Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks Law Enforcement Division for 15 years and works in Region 1. In this training, we're trying to do some stuff that's pretty high intensity. It doesn't happen very often, but it, when it does, it's game on and it's gonna be uh, pretty exciting. I no situation will ever duplicate what they're gonna find in the field. I remember the first time I wrote a ticket, I was nervous, my hand was shaking. It sure didn't seem to go very good. The more I did it, the more relaxed I got. The trainers and facilitators know that while there are particular objectives for each situation, there are different ways to get the job done. If you've done things a hundred times the same way, maybe there's a different way we can look at it. And sometimes it's the younger wardens who bring that to our attention. It's like, hey, I did it this way, what's wrong with that? You know, officer safety is a real key thing when you're dealing with this stuff, especially when you're by yourself out in the middle of nowhere. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Near Anaconda, Montana, game wardens are investigating a shooting in the backcountry of what a fisherman claims to have been a brown bear. And in a field training exercise, a warden checking a campsite is confronted by an armed assailant. Could be. This is just a truck that generally matches the description. And the tent's part of it. All this is yep. part of it. All of it except for the cameraman. Okay. Anybody in camp? Montana game warden. How we doing? Hey, why don't you hold the cup there? I just want to talk to you for a minute. Clear. Clear. Typically we don't see a guy just taking off running for their tent, so you know my truck was back there. So I got behind cover and he was coming at me pointing a gun. So when I got to the truck, I realized he was holding a weapon. I wanted to confirm he was holding a gun, not something else. Another option from this point. What was your thinking of this individual when he came out? Make good verbal command. Perfect. Uh -huh. What are you doing? Hey, hold it, stop. What other option could you have done? I mean, one option I thought about for a second was to cut him off before he got to the tent. I wanted to make sure there was a reason, you know, to pull my weapon. I'm never going to pull my weapon unless I intend to use it. Perfect on that. Great use of cover, perfect position. So it's designed either way. All right. And that's just the way it plays out, depends on how the guy's working. OK. So good. All right. So good shooting. For Montana game wardens, it is rare for them to have the need to use their firearm in a typical day-to-day -day situation, but they are trained to use force if necessary. Go! Region 2 wardens are doing annual qualifications with live rounds. Some of the most important parts of this training are personal safety and maintaining standards of firearms proficiency. Begin. You should be scanning and breathing at the end of every round, okay? Okay, go ahead and uh, reload five, and make sure you have five additional available for a speed reload up here, okay? Line's hot. Are you ready? Yep. The line's hot. Begin. That's 
pretty good. You dropped one down there a little low somewhere off the target, but yeah, four out of five hit. It's good job. Your first your first one was right in there. Nice shot. Yeah. Let's put up uh, new targets on all four of these. Up next, shotguns. Okay, is the line ready? Cover your target. You will do a combat reload. After you do that, on command, you'll tactically move to the 10-yard line. It's three standing, two kneeling, just like it's 25. You guys good on that? Okay, begin. Okay, weapons are clear. Advance and score target. Good shooting, buddy. Thanks, man. Good shooting. Big hands for Ezra. That's, Ooh, that's a good job. Well, were you, were you, you eight of eight up there, by the way? No. Uh, we'll <laughs> 100 miles to the east, just outside Warm Springs, Montana, Warden Joe Cambic has set up a saturation patrol for the waterfowl opener. The Pacific Flyway brings in migrating birds that fly through Montana airspace each year. At the Warm Springs waterfowl area just outside Anaconda, Montana, the season is just getting underway, and waterfowl hunters who have been coming here for years, well, they know all the good spots. Game wardens have come out for opening day. They'll check licenses, ammunition, shotguns, and bird limits. They will also have Justin Singletary undercover to observe hunter activity. Uh, that's gonna be the first thing we look for is shooting. Uh, too early. Oh, wow, it's 6.38, so. I think shooting lights at seven. Seven twenty-seven. Half an hour before that. So really, what I want to do is just go all the way down to the end and kind of see who's around, and we'll probably head back and. Uh, Kind of get in the center of all this. To, there's people everywhere. We'll just kind of start getting stuff ready and see if we can't hear any early shots. This is one of the things we're going to be looking for today, and I almost forgot my own. It's the plug for the shotgun, so that you can only put three shotgun shells in the uh, magazine of the shotgun. So another thing we're gonna be looking for is if people are using still shot, they have to be using still shot. So you can't have any lead shot on your person. It doesn't really matter where we go, so we're just gonna walk down here and just kinda sit and watch and listen for a little bit, so. So that's about one minute before. <laughs> Waterfowl hunting opening day has just begun in the pre-dawn light, but it can be lethal in these conditions for both wardens and excited hunters with shotguns being fired in close proximity. Coming up on wardens, will there be trouble in the high country bear investigation? <laughs> Wardens descend on the Warm Springs waterfowl area in Montana's Deer Lodge Valley for opening day. They are saturating the area, checking licenses, as well as conducting an undercover operation. It's just after 7 a.m., and Warden Joe Cambic is on the scene. Hello, man. Your side's really busy. Mike's side is really slow, so this way. There's a lot of shooting going on. If you need something, give a shout. Okay. Yeah, we might. We're gonna sit here for a little bit longer and we might move and uh, check out another pond. But yeah, there's 
I think this is way busier than last year. All right, dude. Bye. I think most of them are, sounds like most of the shootings, between pond two and three, so. I think we're all getting antsy. The undercover operation finds Warden Justin Singletary looking for the best location to make contact and get a read on hunter activity. I'm trying to get to some higher ground. See if we can see what's going on. We're gonna poke our heads in over here. It seems like all the shooting's going on over here. There's a lot of people here. Coming out to check these guys, you know, they're really hard to see. They're down in the reeds and uh, you'll walk, you'll almost walk right past them sometimes. Well, when you're out here duck hunting, you gotta be careful, you know, being in close proximity to another hunter or another hunter not knowing where you're at and they shoot too low or something like that. So you gotta keep really good control of the situation. We got a hunter coming over right now. So we kind of got this one dialed in. There's five hunters over here. Um, we should start moving around and checking some other stuff. See if we can see something going on. Well, I hope you guys have some more luck. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, we'll get good. Have any luck? Yeah, no, I ain't. No. <laughs> Good deal. We're gonna try to move somewhere else. We're not in your way. For Warden Justin Singletary to be successful as an undercover agent, he needs to blend in, and that can be difficult to do. I got made. 250 miles to the northwest in Region 1, wardens continue their simunitions training. Using simunition guns, which are real service guns, decommissioned and adapted to shoot paint bullets, trainers want to give wardens the upper hand under intense firefighting situations. And, and I know our first uh, instinct is to take care of our partner, but if we have these two down, that's our threat. Montana is an open carry state, so wardens coming in contact with armed individuals is not unusual. Captain Lee Anderson's wardens train for any possibility. Today, what we're training is, is in simunitions, uh, and this is some really good, high-speed, uh, real-life, practical training that we're doing. You know, you're basically uh, carrying a real uh, converted firearm that, instead of shooting a bullet, shoots uh, basically a little paintball at about 400 feet per second. And there is a little bit of pain associated with it if you do get hit. It's just a great way to get a real life scenario without obviously using real ammo. A shotgun is gonna be blue, the pistol is gonna be blue, the revolver is gonna be blue. You get two good hits on the bad guy. So we'll be hit, hit, move. When you move, you decock the pistol. And then we're gonna bust right into the cover drill, which is gonna be an absolute gunfight. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Montana game wardens are training with federal agent Rick Branzell in a cover drill situation using Simunition, a brand of paintball rounds adapted for training in special firearms. Get on the ground! Go to him, John. Hey, real well him. Run 
Front sight, Dan, front sight. Front sight, Dan, pick up your front sight. Hit! Hit, hit! Oh! He's hot! Whoa! <laughs> gun loader. See what he did? He moved with an unloaded gun. So I just walked back. Hit, hit, stop! Decock and holster. I'm taking your helmet off. Got the adrenaline dump going, see? That's pretty fun. There you go. 250 miles to the southeastern region two, Warden Joe Kamick recruits a little help in his district. It's opening day of waterfowl hunting in Montana's Deer Lodge Valley. Game wardens are conducting a saturation patrol to see that bird hunting resources are being maintained by the considerable numbers of hunters who come here. It's the first day of waterfowl season within your first couple of checks. You got to be on top of your game and uh, to make sure that you're safe and you're doing your job correctly and adequately. Checking waterfowl hunters is almost like doing a boat check. Um, you just, everything you got to remember from a plug to steel shot, you know, non toxic shot, um, licenses, state license, federal license, um, birds, a lot going on all at once. Excited. They must have got themselves a coot. So how law-abiding are the hunters here? Part of that is difficult to determine. Warden Justin Singletary has gone undercover and talks with Warden Joe Cambic, who's working the access points to these ponds. You in on that action? Yeah, I would definitely say that this group needs to be checked eventually. I think I'm sitting in an ant bed, so that's awesome. <laughs> All right, man, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. With a variety of birds in the area and how they are tallied up, well, it can be a little confusing. Warden Aaron Berg is going to check a group of hunters on their way out. Oh! <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Hey, pretty good. How was your morning? It was fun. Yeah? I'm tired now. Are you? Oh, we're tired. Yeah. Well, we'll do some uh, some checking once you catch your breath. Okay, do you got your duck stamp with you? Your bird I'm stamp? I'm only 15. Oh, are you? Yeah, he's only 15. Gotcha. You are only 15. And then I can just check your gun real quick sure. if it's clean. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And then uh, your harvested birds are where? So you've got five hand mallards. Five hand mallards, because we're allowed two apiece. Four teal. And we're allowed two apiece on those. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's that, a shub what are they, shoveler or whatever? Yeah, we were wondering about that. Is that mm -hmm. what they're called, I think so. Nose? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's got to be a male shoveler. OK. Mm-hmm. Okay. Man, you guys had a, a great day, so. Awesome. Yep. Well, very cool, guys. Well, I'll let you get on your way right. so you can get home, okay? Congrats. Yeah. All right. When we return, it's back to the bear investigation, which took place a couple of weeks prior to the waterfowl opener and Warden Cambic is turning up evidence. He said he shot two or three times. Well, I think I see four brass already right there, so that's how shook up he is.
A fisherman is reported being confronted by and shooting a grizzly bear near Barker Lake in the Pentler Mountains. Wardens Terry Althouse and Joe Kambick are moving deep into the backcountry to investigate the situation. So it'll go up here, it'll go up for a ways and then it flattens out and then it'll kind of drop into the creek. And I know we can go that far. Take my pistol and a couple of knives. This case has more than a few questions. Was it actually a grizzly bear? Are there any bear cubs to consider? And will the shooting scene match the incident report that was filed? There's just a bunch of uh, unanswered questions we're gonna have to figure out when we get there. You know, because if a guy's gonna shoot a bear in self-defense, there better not be any holes in his, in his So I'm just thinking, we'll look to make sure that there's all the bullet holes are in the front of it. So I got it marked in my GPS, you got it marked in yours. But it's probably going to be a circuitous route around that ridge, so a couple miles. I think we're going to make better time hoofing it from here. For wardens, the investigation process in the backcountry has its own challenges. Just getting there can be dangerous. The terrain is treacherous, it's traversing mountains, and though uncertain conditions not mentioning being a part of the food chain. So you want to go to the lake, the lower lake, and then try to go around the back of it, see if we can find that trail? Yep. Look at that bear country. Being stalked and confronted by a large bear in the back country, even with the right gear and know-how, is a daunting situation. I was carrying a 10 millimeter pistol with me on my side. I took it out of the holster, didn't have a shell in it. My hands were wet, tried to put a shell in it, couldn't because my hands slid on the mechanism. So I had to dry my hands off, get a shell in. And then I'm looking at the bear thinking, okay, I'll see if I can scare him. So I did the yelling at him. He just stood there and looked. He never, never looked left or right, just same thing straight at me, eyeball to eyeball. So I thought, well, I'll try and scare him. So I pulled up the pistol off to the right-hand side and shot. He just stood there. The bear chased him all the way around the lake. He was hyperventilating. He, he was scared, chatless. 7,800 feet and climbing. The air's getting a little thin. I'm getting there. There's bear food here. That's for damn sure. Do we look like Lewis and Clark here or what? It's no. gotta be in that yeah, bowl. It's gotta be. I ain't gonna lie to you, this ain't easy. After a rigorous hike, the wardens have finally arrived at Upper Barker Lake. Is it a grizzly, like the fisherman David Gawkey reported? But you couldn't see it in there until you got right up on it. Watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel.
In Region 2, a large bear has stalked and confronted a fisherman. He shot the bear and reported it was a grizzly bear, which are federally protected. So Wardens Joe Cambic and Terry Althouse have hiked up into the rugged high country to investigate the shooting. From what I can see right here, I mean, this is close call. This is, this is coming close. The fisherman, Dr. Dave Gawkey, is a veterinarian who has lots of experience with animals and the outdoors. Just how did the bear shooting at Barker Lake go down? To get a better idea, Joe Cambic does a phone interview. I walked down that trail, and then... Myself and my two dogs went for a horse ride up to what's called Upper Barker Lake, and it's a pretty good fishing lake for mountain trout. Maybe, you know, four to five. There should be a trail right along the creek. And kind of... Fortunately, caught a couple fish right off the bat, cleaned the fish, put them in my creel, put all my fishing gear together, was kneeling down at the lake to wash my hands for the walk out, and I heard a woof, woof. It's a woof, woof, woof. And he just did it once. He just came up behind me and just woof. He came up the trail. He was parallel. He was on the trail. If you walk, because you probably have had time to walk down the trail. And then I'm looking at the bear thinking, OK, I'll see if I can scare him. So I did the yelling at him. He just stood there and looked. He never, never looked left or right. Just the same thing, straight at me, eyeball to eyeball. So I thought, well, I've got all my stuff ready to go. I'm just going to take off and see what happens. So I picked up my backpack with the fishing gear, picked up my creel with the fish in it, and I took off. I didn't go over to Lower Park. He looks across that lake, and he takes off. And I'm thinking, he's going to come. Amazing thing to watch him pick his head up, look across that lake, and make direct eye contact, eyeball to eyeball. And, and it's like, this is it. You just, it's one of those things you, you just know what's going to happen. Oh, so you were, you were facing the lake, so I got to get below it here. So I'm thinking, well, I'll drop the fish on the trail. Maybe he'll stop for the fish. So I watch the bear. He's running, full out bear lope, as fast as he can go. Goes right over the top of the creel, never breaks stride. He's at you, and you start firing from 10 to 12 yards away, you hit him, and he rolls himself into the creek. I fire one shot. Unfortunately, that shot hit him in the back and broke his back and put him down. I can kind of see the picture now, what happens. I see this trail that you're talking about, and I can see kind of how it happened. Yep, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. So to go from being hunter to hunted is quite a flip, too. If you go back here, you'll find where he fired the warning shots. First shot, he fired in the air. He said it didn't do anything. Second shot, he fired into the dirt in front of it. It backed off 15, 20 yards. Well, Joe asked me, was it a big bear? I said, when he's chasing you, it's a damn big bear. And according to his story, it comes around the corner, and it ends up right here. Start sending lead down range. Well, he said the bear immediately went down. I'm trying to find something that indicates that the bear took its first round right in here somewhere. Blood, hair, anything. Where he finally shot the bear was 10 to 12 yards from where he was at. So somewhere in this radius, we ought to find some brass. Yep, yes, okay, score. So that kind of helps me out. Well, it appears to me that his brass is right here. Or I thought I hit him three times because I saw three blood spots on his side. Um, but when they did the autopsy, I think they only found two bullets in him. Well, now we know how the bear shooting went down at Barker Lake. But the question remains, was it a grizzly bear that the fisherman had to nearly fight off.
In western Montana, it's the waterfowl hunting season opening day, and the shotguns used here can be lethal at close range. So this is a dangerous assignment for game wardens, examining guns at a high risk for accidental shootings as hunters are in close proximity to one another. It's the first day of duck season. Uh, most game wardens that are out working, uh, their officer safety has got to be the first thing that they start thinking about. You know, a shotgun at close range, it's, it's dangerous. It's that accident that you have to worry about. You're, they're handling guns back and forth to you. There's dogs, there's all kinds of things that's going on all at once and people lose track of what they're doing. Most of the guns that I checked today for plugs, you know, they were walking out, they were almost to their vehicles and there was still uh, a shell ready to go. One of our guys today, I mean, he said that he knew that the shot, would cut, the shot pattern was coming down on top of him or, or real close to him uh, because these people aren't watching what's in front of them or what's behind them. They focus on that one thing, their target, that's their duck, and no regard for what else is going on around them. When you're checking waterfowl hunters, it's basically up to us to make sure that we know what they're doing all the time so that we don't get hurt. With this inspection drill, Warden set the tone about hunting in the community and staying within the regulations. That ensures sustainable waterfowl hunting for the future. Hello. Uh, I'm waiting to hear from you. Uh, me and two Tanner up here on the roadway. Uh, We've got elevation and we're just kind of watching. Uh, yeah, we're, we're actually above the ponds uh, watching everything right now. I'm gonna try to check some of these guys that are coming out just so I can, you know, check their guns and everything. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, got, got a, is that the, the duck that he they threw? Retrieved. They retrieved it? Okay, all right, good. And a coot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Can I see uh, your gun there real quick? And then everybody's licenses too, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, okay, so here's what we got going. Here, this is trapping. Okay. This is your conservation. You still need that, so don't throw that one away. The only thing you're missing is a $15 federal waterfowl stamp. You can buy them at a post office or at any sporting goods store. Okay. You'll need to go get that before you come out again. Well, you guys can go ahead and put your stuff away. Um, like I said, this ain't the end of the world. I'll just take care of some paperwork real quick and I'll be right with you. Okay. okay. Waterfowl hunters need to possess two stamps, what we call the state license and, and the federal waterfowl stamp. He only had his state. He didn't uh, purchase his federal. Either way, um, you know, he's being good about it. He's not trying to hide anything. So we'll just take care of the ticket and move on. Everybody's excited to get out for the first day. And we checked some folks. Uh, you know, everybody was being pretty good today. There weren't a lot of violations, which is a good thing. I consider that a successful day. Uh, even though you don't find any violations, that means everybody was doing what they should with the resource. Two hundred and fifty miles to the northwest in Region One, simunition training continues. Here, wardens encounter a vehicle and what turns out to be two armed assailants. Wardens must be ready to respond effectively. How's it going? Four four nine FG one seven. We got shots fired. We have an officer down. Uh, suspect down. Send back up. And I want my guys to be trained so that they know how to do the right thing, you know, the right time, with hopefully the best outcome possible. Get down on the ground.
obviously the whole goal of training is to make mistakes while you're training. You did a lot of wandering around not doing anything. Bouncing around, gun in, gun out, gun in, gun out. The cake's on a different roll. We have to be a little more aggressive and assertive. We like to see that too. Sheriff Dispatch, FG12. I'm gonna be out with uh, FWP652. It'll be a white GMC Sierra. Well, talk to the passenger, talk to the driver, see what's up. How you guys doing? Whoa, go on, drop the ball! Drop the ball! Drop it down! Drop it! Hands in the air! Hands in the air! At Barker Lake in Montana's high country, a fisherman has shot and killed a bear that repeatedly came after him. He reported that it was a grizzly bear, which are federally protected, so wardens have investigated the shooting and found the bear. The bear that was shot and killed turns out not to be a grizzly, but with the general color of its coat and the situation, you can see how the fisherman might have mistaken it for a grizzly bear. This is a middle-aged 150-pound male black bear with multiple bullet holes. Well, there's one right there. Here's another one. That one sure would have put him down. He's a cinnamon color. He's got some kind of lighter toward the back, but he's uh, darker, you know, looking at him. He's got the cinnamon on his back, and then he's kind of darker up front. He's got a decent sized head on him. Yeah, and there's old hair here, that these guard hairs that are pretty light. During open season, all legally killed animals must be packed out. In this case, it was not in open season and the shooting was ruled in self-defense. The wardens only skin the bear and cut it apart to look for bullet travel. They will move it away from the trails to hopefully avoid other contact between people, predators, or scavengers. Back in Region 1, wardens are training in a truck takedown drill where they do a typical stop to check a vehicle and things go bad very quickly. Sheriff Dispatch, FG12. I'm going to be out with uh, FWP652. It'll be a white GMC Sierra. Well, talk to the passenger, talk to the driver, see what's up. How you guys doing? Whoa, oh, God! Drop the ball! Drop the ball! Drop the ball! Drop it! Hands in the air! Hands in the air! Turn around! Hey, stop! Keep your hands in the air. Do not turn around. Start walking to your left. Guide couple to your left. Ron, talk to me. You okay, buddy? Keep going to your left. Stop! Get down on your knees! Down on your knees! Do it now! Lay on your stomach! Down on your stomach! Arms out to your side! Okay, you okay, Ron? Take cover, Ron! Take cover! You okay, buddy? Good. Can you cover these guys? Reload. 449 FG17. We got shots fired. We have an officer down, a suspect down. Send back up. An ambulance, please, to the Ben Ranger Station. Excellent. 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 You are the only guys that brought this guy out over here. Good job. And this is as close to real as you can get. It, it really works, it's really effective. Uh, we got a real good professional group of trainers, and they know what they're doing, and uh, yeah, it's just a win-win for everybody.